nobody knows even why some houses are called haunted. What would you call this place? Well, diseased, sick, crazy. Such houses are described in the Bible as blindness. Before that, a home was faced for the underworld. A house of Hades. Hello everybody, this is Paranormal UK Radio Show, the flagship show of the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm your host, Irene Allen Block, and with me today is my co-host, Christian Delaney. Hi there. Hi, Irene. Oh, I've got a bit of a headache, oh. Christian. But, you know, we won't mess around. We'll get straight into the show because we've got a lot to talk about today. Yes. Okay, so... Would you like to introduce the guest? Yes, so tonight, everybody, we're going to be uh, interviewing Jason Offutt, who is a paranormal investigator and author of several paranormal books, such as What Lurks Beyond, Darkness Walks, Shadow People Among Us, Haunted Missouri, and Paranormal Missouri. He's also Chasing American Monsters, which is another one of his latest books that he's produced. And... Um, he is also going to be talking about shadow people and black-eyed children. He is also a teacher of journalism at Northwest Missouri State University. And if I've missed anything out, I'm sure Jason will tell us. So how are you, Jason? Are you all right? I'm doing terrific. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about the headache over there. <laughs> oh, oh, me? Yeah, yes. I'm a, I am a bit of a headache, darling. Honestly, I am. Everyone <laughs> says she's a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a headache. And for anybody that's listening at the moment, the very strange noises that you may be able to hear over the um, show, uh, it's not me, it's not any bodily functions coming from me or anything like that, and it's not a demon. It's Gertie is in the room. Gertie, the paranormal pup, the mascot of the Paranormal UK Radio Network, is in the room snoring her head off so i apologize in advance for any very scary noises but it looks like we're gonna have a scary show tonight well i hope it's pretty scary can you do um uh scary noises jason well it sounds like you've got it covered (laughs) (laughs) i have haven't i would you've taken any pressure off me if i do anything strange over on this end i'll just blame it on your dog (laughs) <laughs> yeah, most people do. <laughs> Lay down, dog. <laughs> or it's the dog. Yeah, yeah. so you'll be able to get away with all that but anyway, Jason. If you don't Excellent. make any strange noises, we just pretend they're Gert. It's Gertie. Okay? Right. Okay, so where should we start? Shadow people, black-eyed children, uh, Obviously, you've done a lot of research because you've written books on these subjects. So. Right, right. Well, the the shadow people is uh, is is one that's it's been with me for a really long time. Um, in, in the house that I grew up in, it was um, it was this two room schoolhouse uh, when schools in uh, in the United States were uh, you know we were still you know largely agrarian even. Um, you know, even until you know the early to mid nineteen nineteen hundreds, we you know we still a lot of farm families, and there were a lot of small schools out in these areas that uh, would take care of all all of these kids. You'd have you've had you'd have children from uh, like first grade up through eighth in one room, and then the older ones in another room getting getting their education. Uh, at at one point, all these schools were consolidated, and uh, a lot of the schoolhouses were torn down, but Actually, the one that my father went to and my grandmother taught in uh, was they, it was turned into a house, and that's what I grew up in. And it was about 120 years old when I was a kid, uh, so now it's you know four four to four to five hundred years old. Um, but it was uh, for for America, it was kind of an old house, um, and so there were a lot of you know some strange things that happened around the house, but. Uh, one of the strangest things involved shadow people. And I was, you know, about nine years old, maybe. And 
I mean, my, my, my room, when I went to bed, it was gray because in the country, uh, where I grew up, I, you could just have the windows open hmm. and, and the, and the moonlight would, would come in. And so I would be able to see everything in, in my room, my bookshelf, my Farrah Fawcett, uh, in a, in a bathing suit poster on the wall. <laughs> I used to have a hairstyle like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I could see all that, and then and then one night I had just gone to bed. I and I just laid down and, and turned my light off, and something moved in the corner of my room, and and I, I froze. And all of a sudden, this black figure of a man walked out of the corner of my bedroom, and it walked past my bed and into the hallway. And I yelled for my dad. Um, and I heard him in the other. He'd just gone to bed too. He dropped a, a, a GD and, and got out of bed and tromped through the hallway. And that immediately I realized, oh my God, I just killed my father because I sent him into the hallway that that, you know, black, you know, black, black uh, cut out of a human just walked into. I didn't know what the creature was, but it was going to come, come face to face with my dad. And dad turned the light on, and didn't see anything. Oh. And this happened. Often, uh, within, you know, for the next few months, uh, it, it was one human figure. Sometimes it was, it was a, a, a row of, uh, you know, six to ten all coming out of the same place in my wall. And they all walked like a, a badly drawn early 1970s cartoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they, they appeared uh, two dimensional. And I was absolutely, you know, scared to death by these things. Uh, I, I gave up at one point calling for my dad because as soon as he came and turned the light on, they were all gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I've always been fairly scientifically minded, so I wanted to try and figure out what what these were, so I didn't have to face the fact that they they may be you know something supernatural. And I never could pin it on anything that they could have been. You know, you know, clouds going over the moon. Uh, uh, and and that's just what the light were the the, the figures were. Maybe a car was coming down the highway, but it was none of those things. And and then mm. at, at one point they just stopped showing up. What did they do? They just came out. Did they stand looking at you or anything? No, there were a lot of lot. There's a lot of shadow people encounters where they do that. But but mine, um, I, I I made a number of, of categories during my research of shadow people, and mm. and this one I fit into the the category of benign shadows because they just seemed to be going from point A to point B, and where uh, I was was right in the middle. Yeah, it's like they're following some sort of ley line or energy line and just plodding along from. One place to another, right? And they took absolutely no notice of me mm. whatsoever. And and I didn't, mm. you know, know what these things were. And I'd never heard of the term shadow people. That's just in my head what I what I was calling them. And then in the 1990s, I was listening to Art Bell, and he started talking about them. And I was like, oh my gosh! Not only have other people seen what I saw when I was a kid, they call them the same things, which mm. was pretty fascinating to me. But uh, yeah, that's that's where yeah. my interest came the, from. This. This is what gets me, you know, because this was classed as, or a lot of people class this as an urban myth. But an urban myth, to be an urban myth, it's got to be uh, something that has occurred that there's never been any witnesses. And yet witnesses all around the world report seeing shadow people. And, uh, oh, what was I... But what I can't get is, I know it started first started getting really hot in the 1990s when, after a report in Texas, but uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot. No, that was sorry, I'm getting muddled up now with black eyed kids. Okay. <laughs> sorry, people, forget the Texas bit. Cut. <laughs> we'll get to the Texas bit bit soon enough. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it, you know, this is classed as an urban myth, um, mm. the black-eyed children and shadow people. But to be a myth, an urban myth, there should be no witnesses, and yet there are witnesses all around the world to both phenomena. Mm. 
Right, and urban urban myths. One of those, uh, you know, uh, uh, escaped mental patients who, uh, yeah. you know, stalks the the lover's lane, and and mm-hmm. people drive off, and they find a hook hand connected to the door of the car, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. and no, no such thing ever happened. So those are the urban myths. But yes, people. When you said around the world, literally, um, I interviewed people uh, you know, from from the United States uh, to Australia and, and every place in between who have yeah. had shadow people encounters. Well, yeah, even included me, and I should tell you about that later on. But mm. also, um, now my brain, I, I've got this blinding headache, so I'm beginning to forget what I was going to say now. But can I, uh, can I you're talking. You, oh, sorry, um, sorry, Christian. Sorry, you talk you about different me. different varieties. You know, besides this benign variety that you talk to that comes clumsily out of the wall sort of thing, there is this one that's like you see out the corner of your eye. It's like a flash bang. It's gone. That move very fast. Right. Those um, – and I think everybody uh, or most people, I think, have, have seen something like that, a dark figure out of the corner of your eye, and yeah. then, it, then it's just gone. Uh, one of the and, – and this is a uh, uh, a Native American myth, um, the uh, the Hopis from, uh, from the southwestern part of the United States had a myth about these. I've met uh, Hopis. And they said that when I they 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 did mention it when I spoke. To them. Right, right, yeah. Um, thank you for backing me up on that. That's true because I <laughs> I spoke to one uh, at so the Herd Museum in um, in Phoenix when I was over there, and there was a guy and a lady talking about these strange shadows <laughs> that kept following people around this campfire, but they weren't. They didn't. They thought it went against the grain because it was going against what the campfire would normally do. It was almost as if they were dancing around them. It was very strange. Right. Well, there. Yeah. The 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 there are. Yeah. There's so many different types, and 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 I'll I'll dig into to 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 most of those. But but the one in the corner of the eyes. Um. The um. You know, there there are a number of cultures around the world who consider shadow people omens. Yeah. Uh, of something bad, they're they're um, you know predicting something bad is going to happen. Uh, I had uh, sort not necessarily a personal uh, experience with this, but a woman I worked with knew that I was interested in in this. It was uh, it was at a newspaper that I, I used to work for, and she said, "Jason, it's, it's the weirdest thing that I've been seeing this this." You know, dark being out of the corner of my eye, and you know, when I turn my head, of course, it's there's nothing there. And you know, I, I, I you know mentioned shadow people, and she goes, "Yeah, I've heard of those, but I've never never actually seen one." And then she found out that her husband had esophageal cancer. Who? And she said after that revelation that the doctor gave them, that she started seeing the shadow person. More and more into, you know, not in the periphery, but it was more and more when she directly looked at it. And it, at some point she would see it, you know, walking through their house, uh, straight on. Yeah. And soon after that, her husband, her husband passed away. Um, I mean, so in, in, in this case, to me, the, uh, you know, the, you know, the shadow people, uh, you know, predicting death and sort of waiting, waiting on someone to die, that, uh, that certainly came true in, in her case. Mm. Yeah, that that's um, something I read about today, how they, they're thought to be like uh, harbingers of death, waiting around for that person to die to take their soul. Right. I had, uh, I, I was contacted by a woman and, and it ended up she contacted a couple of other people who, um, were, were doing paranormal research and, sh- and she gave me the story of her, her husband, um, being diagnosed with cancer and it was stage yeah. four and he was, he was, he was going to go sometime soon and he kept complaining about all these dark figures around his bed and nobody else ever saw them. And, and at one point he knew that he wasn't that far from death. He, he convinced his wife, um, where the doctor said no, but he convinced his wife to put him in the car 
and go someplace. So she drove about 150 miles, and he thought that was far enough, and she got him into a, a hotel room, and he started crying. And she, she asked what, what the problem was, and, and he said, they followed me. I wanted to die mm. without these things standing around the bed staring at me, but they followed me. And, and then he passed on. Oh, that's mm. so sad. Mm. Really sad. Absolutely. Right. So yes, the the uh, uh, you know these these being you know har- harbingers of uh, of death is again in, in a number of different cultures and uh, and 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 mm-hmm. you know this type of shadow person it seems seems to be true. When I, I said there were a number of categories, what what I specifically mean by that is there. Wow, that, <laughs> that was not Gertie, people. <laughs> no, that's my four year old angry with my twelve year old upstairs. <laughs> so. Yeah, because let's hope. Oh my gosh, let's hope that goes down. Um, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, where was I now? All right, yeah. Uh, that I, I'm firmly convinced, just by the behaviors of, of the of different types of shadow people, that there are a number of different entities that mm. fit into that Category. you know sh- shadow person name, but they are not the same types of entities. I, I'm I'm pretty convinced of that. Mm. Because there are, um, again, uh, omens, omens of death. We have uh, shadow people who behave just like a, a residual ghost. You know, somebody will see this shadow person coming down the stairs of their house, yeah. turning the corner and into the kitchen. And this will happen on occasion, you know, just like a residual ghost would. And, and you know, maybe that's all the power that particular spirit can, can manifest is, is, you know, a shadow shape. Um, but then there are uh, other ones that uh, are a little bit more terrifying. There are, there are shadow beings that um, people see looming uh, over their bed when they sleep or standing in a doorway kind of peering in at yeah, people. I was just going to say about that, the hat man. It's one of those. Often which, which, seen him, oh, the hat man. Hat man. Often seen in bedrooms and uh, near people's beds. And observing the person while they're laying there. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I've had, uh, uh, you know, I talked to people, a number of, number of people with stories about them from, uh, you know, Brazil to, to South Africa to, to here yeah. in, in the States. Um, one of the, the, the most interesting cases, and this, this shadow person did something that um, uh, when when I interviewed a, a physicist about this, uh, you know, he, he he's he's a big believer in the paranormal and he wants to be able to prove it. But 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 it's cases like I'm about ready to describe you that really throws him for a loop. Um, mm-hmm. There was a, a a man who was home. He was um, a young man. He um, I think he's 18 or 19, and, and he was home. Uh, at his parents' house, and he was sitting in the living room uh, watching television, and he suddenly felt like he wasn't alone. And he turned around, and he looked into the doorway that was between the living room and the kitchen, and there was the hat man, which which for your audience, if you're not sure about what that is, it's, it, it's like any other shadow person, the description. It's, uh, they, they seem two-dimensional. Uh, they're... they're Larger than or blacker than night, uh, human shaped shadows that are generally a little bit, you know, generally they're a little bit bigger than a normal human, and and it's, they, they wear a fedora. The Hat Man does, but yeah. anyway, they, this this entity was just standing in the doorway, and you you can't see shadow beings. Um, their mouth, their nose, uh, most of the time their eyes, although you can on occasion. Uh, but he and he couldn't see any of these, but he felt that it was just it was watching him. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the shadow being the hat man realized that it had been seen, and it turn, turns around and runs into the kitchen. And and this this gentleman uh, hears a crash of glass, and, and he gets up and he goes into the kitchen and he sees the shadow person running off the back porch and jump and you know just jumping and falling underneath the porch. Uh, the house, the way it was constructed, the kitchen. Uh, was on the second story, so there was a long way between the porch and the ground, and they hadn't put stairs on it yet. Um, but the crash was there was a double pane sliding glass door, yeah. And the shadow entity had apparently ran through the door 
The first pane of glass was shattered. The second pane of glass was not. That's, a, that's weird because that gives you the impression that this is a solid, solid object, this person. At least it was when it ran through the first pane of glass. Yeah. When it got so, to the second pane of glass, it wasn't solid anymore. And this is where the the physicist I interviewed was, you know, this is he said this is where it where it, where it you know goes south for me, is because in order to do things that shadow people purportedly do, which are yeah. you know pull 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 blankets, pull a cover uh, off people, uh, open a door by turning a handle, mm. you know, those things require mass. That's you, right. You, in in order to 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 exert that force. Uh, but then they also do things like run through a door, and at that point they can't have mass. So, and 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 according to you know all sorts of phys- physical laws, you can't have both. Yeah. Well, yeah. another another theory is that they're time travelers, isn't it? Right. Right. Another. Um, well, yeah. Time travelers. Uh, another one is uh, interdimensional travelers. That's right, yeah. Which, to me, well, that sort of thing uh, would kind of explain what I saw. Hmm. The the entities walking from point A to point B in my room just happened to be in the middle. Maybe at that time, my the area where my room was was a window area, like John Keel, the, the great paranormal researcher back in the 60s and 70s. He, yeah. he identified window areas where where high strangeness tends to happen. And and maybe at the time when I saw shadow people, my room had one of those window areas and I could see actual people. Maybe they were walking down a sidewalk, but yeah. all I could see of them was the shadow. And maybe, you know, if they turned around to look at me, all they'd see was a shadow of a little boy in the bed. Mm-hmm. I, I've got to tell you this right now. Maybe it's because I knew I was doing this show today and it was on my mind last night when I went to bed. But uh, let me see. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. When I went to bed last night, I had a dream, okay? And it was about a shadow people. But what they were doing, were they were t- in this dream, they were taking the likeness of the person into their own dimension. And occasionally... In the dream, like a time slip would happen and they would be back in our dimension in that likeness and that's where you get your doppelganger from. That was what the dream was like. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I do get these uh, little funny things happen to me. but That reminds me um, of the body snatchers. Yeah, we're not actually snatching the body but taking that person's likeness. Mm, and then, form. of course, you, yeah. yeah. And every time there's a time slip, and they slip it back into our dimension, if somebody's, if they slip back in anywhere near to where that likeness was taken, obviously they could be recognised. Mm. See, that's uh, pretty, pretty doppelganger deep for effect. A dream. That's no, really that, deep this for is a dream. You don't know me. I get studied. <laughs> I get studied by different authorities because of the stuff that happens to me. (laughs) So I wouldn't worry about that. Because when I dream, if I'm not fighting zombies, I I dream of silly things. Like I had uh, recently I I dreamt dreamt that I was telling my wife a joke, and she said that joke's really stupid. And I woke up and I remembered the joke. It was why did the the deli meat tray go to church? (laughs) He, He was... He was trying to find Jesus. Jesus. I thought that was pretty good for me not even trying. It just appeared in my head. (laughs) Yeah. But I tell you, I I do have these uh, revelations, these dreams, and God knows what else that tell me the answers to various things that I'm wondering about. But I must also tell you this, that the last two, three months... Now, I sit on the sofa at night opposite the kitchen door, which is glass, and for the last two or three months, I see something dark flash past that door at the corner of my eye. Mm. And this is, I'm not, I'm not the only one who's seen it. Gertie's seen it too, and she'd tell you, she would tell you. Um, but it's, you know, it's just very, very quick movement when there's nobody or nothing in that kitchen. 
the, the door, glass on the door only comes halfway down the door. So, you, you know, it's not as if it's a dog or anything out there. It comes halfway down and then it's wooden to the floor. So, but you, I, I've actually seen this several times and it's been going on for about three months. Mm. And, and uh, you can't see any, um, you know, any, any, any definition? It's the, no, it's like. Especially if the door's ajar, it's like something's peeping at me through the crack of the door. And as soon as I look up and see it, it's, boom, it's out of the way. It starts out of the way. There was a um, – about yeah, the, the, the peeping. There, One of my favorite stories, and it was actually used in a uh, movie called uh, The Shadow People that came out oh, five years ago maybe, maybe a little more. And and they used my book as as a reference, um, and 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 the, the story was in England. I don't remember what which city now, because uh, again, it's been quite a while. But this um, this gentleman was renting a flat, and uh, he noticed when he was you know taking a tour of the place before he he, he rented it uh, that there was a wear in the carpet, and when he got his got his uh, things moved in. Um, what he noticed was the wear was right in front of the cat where he put his sofa and yeah. the television because there was a specific hookup for the television. Um, and, of course, logically, the couch goes here. The sofa goes here. And there was that, that one spot. And he, he didn't think anything of it until he'd be sitting watching television on, on his sofa. And whenever it would fade to black uh, for a commercial or it would uh, a PSA or or they were you know just changing scenes they would fade out and fade back in yeah. it looked to him as if there was somebody else sitting on the couch with him mm. and 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 this really started bothering him because he'd look over and of course no one no one was there and it looked like a a bald person mm. um, and then he started you know Walk, going up, getting on his knees and crawling up to the television and pressing his face close, you know, so when one of those blackout moments came, yeah. he would be able to see better what the reflection was. And he kept doing that and kept doing that and, and it was fleeting. And then he realized, wow, the person who had this flat before me must have been doing exactly the same thing which is why there's the worn spot on the carpet between the sofa and the television. Oh. <laughs> and he decided that one night, you know, I'm just going to turn the television off. There's enough glare coming in from the window that I'll be able to see if anything's reflected. And he said that he saw this the figure of a bald man, completely black, sitting next to him on yeah. the couch. He saw that reflection in the television, and he said the, the thing scooted closer to him. And he, he felt like, you know, it was trying to lean into him. And he got up and went to bed. Mm. And he kept doing this night after night. And, and, the, and the shadow being kept getting closer and closer. And eventually he, he was like, this is, this is something, something's wrong here. Uh, somebody's messing with me. So he started taking out, um, you know, the, the, the covers off of, of wall outlets to see if there was like a hidden camera in his in his room, yeah, uh, or in, in his in his in his flat, and one in the kitchen that faced the area. When he unscrewed it, it looked like it had been unscrewed multiple times. So he was wondering if maybe the person who rented the flat came to the same conclusion that somebody in the next flat over was trying to spy on him. But mm. he eventually thought that was just paranoid and that, that his place was haunted, and he, he moved out of it fairly quickly after that. But th th this, this man was, was pretty convinced something was, was there, you know, spying on him and try to, trying, to, uh, trying to merge with him, of all things. Yeah. Well, this, uh, this, again, is another variety, isn't it? Like shadow ghosts. Right. Again, I think a lot of shadow people encounters are, are flat-out ghosts. Uh, I think a lot of them are not, but I think a lot of them are, and, and this this would would really fit into that. Um, I uh, interviewed a uh, a person who was at a there was a traveling preacher down in Louisiana, um, and he'd stopped into this church to 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 you know to do what evangelicals do, and uh, you know try to 
if not convert people at least to uh you know to bless them or, or or whatever and this 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 woman told me that she was in the audience and they were standing because this guy was dynamic so everybody was standing and clapping and all of a sudden across the 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 podium this the the man was the preacher was standing at the lectern um if, if that's what they called him in churches but he was he was standing there uh preaching and all of a sudden he got quiet because she saw a shadow entity walk over to him and then step inside him. And he got quiet for a second, and then he started preaching again. Um, so, I mean, she she wasn't sure what to make of all that other than it looked like a shadow entity sort of merged with this man and, and yeah. possibly, took, possibly uh, uh, possessed him. Yeah. Which is another type of shadow person that that uh, you know uh, demonic entities have been uh, been labeled shadow people. But that's it, yeah. Mm. And also these shadow people, they came, they come in various shades. You know, we see them like gray and things like that, or a misty color. And a lot of people say that it's because of. Uh, that they've passed over, it's to do with their spirituality and their soul and everything. Uh, they've died, and, but they haven't crossed over. And the darker they are, the uh, harder it is going to be for them to take on that spirituality that they need to be able to cross over. Do you understand that? Right, right. Because that's a bit backwards the way I said it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I understand I understand where you're going with, with that. I mm. when I when I researched my book, um, I, I told you I spoke with a phys- physicist. I talked with a couple of different scientists about the, the scientific and uh you know aspects of, of what these beings could be. I uh, I interviewed psychologists and psychiatrists about, you know, mentally what these things could be, you know, our mind uh playing tricks mm. on us. But I also spoke with uh, people from uh, some of the major religions uh, and, and Christianity. I spoke with a, an archbishop who uh, who performs exorcisms, and I started to describe what shadow people were, what they looked like, and he finished it for me, just like I'd written it down on a piece of paper and he was reading a script. Yeah, he, he described exactly what I was going to describe. And, and he told me, he said these might be spirits that haven't, you know, haven't crossed yet, as, as you had said. But he said, if any of these beings have, if you can see their eyes, if they, if if they have red eyes, or then they're, then they're demonic. Then they're they're definitely demonic. And and one of the descriptions he gave, which is something I didn't have a chance to tell him, was that these most of these shadow people entities um, are either a little bit taller. Than, than normal people, uh, or they're out of proportion to mm. people, or there's just something that's not a hundred percent representation of, of a human. And, and he said that that's because these entities were not created by God, so they cannot form into something that looks like something that's been created by God. There's always going to be something different, something wrong about them that you'll be able to, to point out. Well, this is it. Yeah, this is what I t- I was taught when I and when I done all this sort of thing. There's something that'll be missing, whether it's an arm, a hand, a finger, an eye. Some part of them will be missing. Is this what you mean? Yes, ex- mm. exactly. Like. Or, or again, something will be completely out of proportion. Like That's right. maybe their arms are a bit too long, or their legs are you know too yeah. short, or, or or something something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I've interviewed a number of people who've seen shadow people uh, with blazing red eyes, and these have been um, a, a type of shadow person that tends to put a fear into their victims that feels unnatural. Yeah. I mean, these people are... Of course, afraid because you know you see something that looks manlike, you know, walking through your house, especially if it's got blazing red eyes. You're scared. Mm. <laughs> but this was this is something more than that. This is a more more primal, deep fear. And 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 most of the people who've encountered these entities have, have said it feels like they're generating the fear inside me so they can feed off of it. That's it, like an like an energy vampire. 
Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. They're feeding off of the energy created by that emotion of, of fear. Um, yeah, and and the the red eyed ones aren't just people, you know, shaped like like people. Uh, this is where we get a number of shadow animals, like cats. Oh, I call, I call them astral critters. Mm-hmm. Now, before you go any further, when we first moved into this house, I used to open the kitchen door and a black cat shape would dive across the floor and straight through the wall. And that happened quite often. And another time, let me tell you this story. Now, it's in my book. Right? I, I went to bed before my husband. He was downstairs watching the television in the sitting room. Well, my bedroom is directly above the sitting room. And I went to bed, and I'm laying there. The light was on, and this thing, which I can only describe as a cross between a fish and a bird, came from the uh, on the ceiling above the door, went across the room over my head, and I watched it. I, my eyes, my head turned as it went over, and it went across the room above my head and straight through the wall, which is an outside wall. It would have gone straight out there, right? I come running downstairs, told my husband, and he laughed and joked at me and called me an idiot and one thing or another. Two months later, he was back down in that sitting room watching television, laying on the sofa, and the same thing happened to him. It went from the doorway on the same route as it had taken in the bedroom above, but on the ceiling downstairs, from the doorway straight across over the top of him and out through the wall. Right. And, we've, you know, the only thing I can think, I it must have been following some sort of low line because uh, whatever it was, it was pitch black. And it, and honestly, I could hear, like, it was like it was like a fish shape with wings. And I could hear the wings moving. That's what attracted me to it. All right. That, that part stuck, is extremely was, interesting because these entities... But it was on the entities- ceiling. It's like gener- it was part of the ceiling. Right. These entity, entities are usually, I mean, there are, uh, you know, cases where they do make noise, but generally they're pretty pretty quiet. Yeah. No. So I, I find heard, it fascinating. I heard, I heard, like, flapping your wings, but it was like it was like some, you know, like those old lanterns that you could shine up onto the ceiling and you'd have a very black picture on the ceiling. It moved like it was in the ceiling, or you know, or it wasn't under the ceiling. It was, there was no space between it and the ceiling. Right. It was. It was. Yeah. Right. I. 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 I got you. You know. I. I have that picture in my in my head. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I done a film in this house not long afterwards, and they they um, reenacted that part in the film, and the object that they put across the ceiling was identical more or less to what I've seen and what he'd seen two months later. But I tell you what, after he'd seen it, he didn't laugh at me anymore. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah my, my wife had seen something in uh, the first house that we owned and I thought she was nuts until I saw it. So yeah, I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. But a lot, a lot of these things also, you know, people that report them, uh, People that are having sleep paralysis report not only the old hag, but also, you know, there's people that report shadow people around them. Right. And and sleep paralysis, the uh, – yeah, that one – I tried in, in my book, Darkness Walks, The Shadow People Among mm-hmm. Us, not to include a lot of sleep paralysis cases because when it, when it comes to – uh, you know, to those, I, I think most of them are probably um, explainable. Um, the uh, you know, we go into a state called uh, you know hypnagogia, yeah. to where uh, our, our brain pumps out uh, you know uh, some some kind of chemical that basically paralyzes us. Because if it didn't, we, our little involuntary muscle twitches would keep us awake all night. So here we are paralyzed. We hit REM sleep, and we're having these vivid dreams, and something wakes us up. And we have, when we're awake, we're still paralyzed. And we still see things from our dream, but we also see where we are in real life. 
Yeah. And all of that stuff's merged merged together. Um, and a lot of times we feel like we, we can't dream, which is where the old, old hag syndrome comes from. But I did include some because they were really too real. Well, I, I find that interesting when it's uh, young children. I had a case once where a four-year-old was seeing an old hag in a dream. Well, at night. So, well, and-, and, you know, a four-year-old, they don't know. You know, this was a time when you didn't let kids know about witches and things like that. And she wasn't into at that age where she was really into the Disney films. Right. So that I mean, in cases like that, I would probably include something like that as a mm. real case, because, yeah, really, what did this child know? It's not going to come up with that yeah. by by him or herself. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, from from different different cultures, um there's a story in, in that I uh, put in my book, uh, Chasing American Monsters, about the Boo Hag, mm-hmm. which is uh, in the southeastern United States when um, uh, slavery was, was repealed in the United States. Um, and all these different African cultures all of a sudden joined. There were, you know, things that, that, that merged and came from that. One of them was the boo hag, which, which seems to be a, a fairly popular type of, of entity. It was, it was a vampire that would sneak into people's house. It had the form of an old lady without any skin and it would oh. sit on the victim's chest and suck the energy out of them. Yeah. And, mm. you know, wow, that's really old hag syndrome stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, it came from Africa, and, and, and you know, the old, old hag came, came from Europe. And, you know, what other cultures have this exact same type of, uh, same type of legend? You know, mm. when, when other cultures around the world talk about the exact same thing at a time when we didn't have, you know, we didn't have the Internet, um, we didn't have television, you know, somebody must have experienced this at some point. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 some of this holds credence with me. Yeah, it's just that, you know, she didn't call it an old hag because she didn't know what an old hag was, you know. She described an old lady, old ugly lady that frightened her, an old lady. That's how she described it. But, uh, you know, that was a few years ago and... She's uh, more than likely creating havoc in school now. (laughs) (laughs) And probably for her, fortunately enough, she probably doesn't remember it. What about astral travelers? You you know, people, we know uh, it's said that we travel when we're asleep, and I'm sure I do because I do get around. I'm absolutely certain of that. But... uh, could we be seeing astral travelers? Could we be seeing people in a shadow form because we're seeing their ethereal body, but we are not seeing them clearly? Do you think that could be it? That, well, I, you know, that had, that had occurred to me. Um, uh, I've interviewed people who are really into astral traveling and, and have told yeah. me that that some of the um, some of the dreams that I've had because I occasionally I will have a, a lucid dream that is so real I can taste things yeah. and feel things and they they described that you were most probably astral traveling at that point. Um, mm-hmm. I, I interviewed uh, a woman who kept having a, a shadow person experience. And it was the same shape, but she only it, 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 it was at night, and it was only in her bedroom. And this is one of the cases where the shadow entity made noise, is that she it told her after months of this that it was a real person. Yeah. And, and that he was astral traveling because he had seen her on the street and fallen in love with her. And one day that they would meet. Mm-hmm. And uh, at one point, it you know pulled back the the veil of shadows, and and she saw it was a curly haired, blonde, uh, handsome looking uh, man Adonis. in his twenties. <laughs> An and, Adonis. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this absolutely terrified her, of course, as it as it should. Hmm. Uh, I talked to her before she uh, encountered him in real life, but uh, I, I wish her the best. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had plenty of stories of from uh, from Greek mythology 
yeah. write about the gods doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I've experienced time slips, what I call time slips. Like I, there was a time when I was in this big old mansion house my son was living in, and he was showing me around in the attic. And as we came out the attic, as my husband and um, uh, it wasn't that, it, you know, at the very top of the house where the servants live, uh, my husband and my son walked outside and I was just about to go through the door. And as I went through the door, I was going to just step in towards the door. There in front of me was a woman who must have been the housekeeper, the way she was dressed and everything, an old housekeeper. You know, that. There was no one else lived in this in this in this house. Nobody at all lived in there. My son was in there doing it up actually, and uh, she looked like an old housekeeper. She even had like a penny on, but she came from it was I would say nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. I looked at her. She looked at me, right, and she both of us looked in shock. I, she, she saw me. She saw me. And quite often I wonder whether when things like that happen, that I could appear to them as a shadow person, as ghost, maybe. Yeah, quite, quite possibly. Yeah, with 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 time travel as as you're des describing it, a time slip, it could be a lot like I'd I, I'd yeah. mentioned what you know the the interdimensional you know bleeding over that. You know, that's just what that that that's all that we can see at that point is 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 the shadow state. Mm. Yeah, and and I'm you know generally generally like like you know solid explanations for something, <laughs> but you know in this case we we don't have any at all. So no, well in, in this particular case, she was as shocked as to see me as I was to see her, and it was only the fact that my son, are you coming, mum? That broke it. Ooh. And then I just walked out the door. I didn't even bother saying anything at the time. I'm so used to not saying anything. I see things all the time. So, you know, I just didn't bother saying anything. But, uh, you know, uh, this is what makes me think with astral traveling, time slips, that these can be people, real people. Right. And I, I complete. I think so, absolutely, as uh, as well. That's one of the one of the explanations that that are one of the yeah one of the things that I, I came up with is that they probably some of these are people. Yeah, but like you say, there's different varieties. You know, there's the dead variety. There's the living variety. There's maybe an interdimensional variety or something like that that are slipping over from time to time during time slips. Right, and that's. Or, but the point is, Jason, the fascination that some of these shadow people, especially the Hat Man, has for other people. You know, if you take an interest in them, if you see one in particular and you take an interest in that, that. Oh, something touched me on the back of the shoulder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. But. That, it seems to me that that shadow person becomes like a stalker. It's got to have more of you. It's got to know more about you. It lurks around you a lot more. And that that does happen as well. Generally, if people don't take an interest in the shadow person, the shadow person doesn't take an interest in them and, and kind of goes away. Yeah, they're more um, like they think, oh, you're a bore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that, that happens with, with ghosts as, as well, mm. ghosts. Um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, well, because popular media showed us this, is that ghosts are going to stay where they died or for some reason hang around someplace, you know, boring like a cemetery. Oh, I've seen where them they, in the supermarkets. Where, exactly. They can, mm. they're as mobile as, as, as we are. And if somebody is, is someplace is purportedly haunted and, you know, Ghost might take an interest in them and follow them home. And, yeah, you're right. If they're really boring, they <laughs> might go find somebody else. <laughs> well, I know if I was a shadow person and someone was boring, I'd go and spy on somebody else. <laughs> I really would because, you know, I like a bit of entertainment. Uh, right. If you if you don't have to, you know, if you don't have to buy a, <laughs> buy a train <laughs> ticket to go someplace, you know, why not? Right, there was something else. Uh, uh, Islam. Now, Islam, they they say in 
Islam has said about the jinn, the jinn, right? Okay, Allah is said to have created humans and angels and the jinn, a race that has free will like humans that can also be good or bad. Now, can it be the jinn? Yes, uh, I uh, also interviewed an expert in Islam about shadow people, and mm. he, just like the uh, uh, the archbishop who said, boom, they're demonic entities, this, this gentleman said, they're uh, they're the jinn. Uh, jinn uh, traditionally, uh, you know, will stay around cemeteries or, or ruins, uh, but they don't have to, and they can appear as uh, black, blacker than than night, human shaped shadows, or they can yeah. appear as a human. They can marry humans, but he said each person has a jinn attached to them, and depending on whether the jinn is good or bad, it can you know be uh, you know appear as a human and do favors for you, or appear as something dark and foreboding that uh, you know causes mischief in your life. So yes, absolutely. Oh, um, I, if I've got a jinn attached to me, the bloody bugger's sleeping. I tell you because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get nothing fortunate happened to me, and I don't get that much bad luck either, but my two sons did. Oh, they went through a hell of a time for years and years. And uh, I often thought that there might be something attached to them. You know? Um, oh. Do you know, um, there's a film, Aladdin. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Aladdin has a spirit. A a genie. genie of the lamp. Well, it, yeah. it's called the genie, which is the anglicised version of jinn, basically. Mm. Um, right. So, uh, without getting into too much scientific sort of thing, um, all I'll say is that, for some reason, Disney seems to be quite um, interested in um, things of the spirit world because it's kind of a it's a theme right the way through a lot of fairy tales, and and if you look at um, all the different characters, because there's a hag in one of the... Um, yeah, well, look, this is it. There's a lot of witches in the fairy tales, absolutely. isn't there? Snow White, the, the um, her mother-in-law or whoever she was, she was a witch, wasn't she? Yeah, there's dwarfish people, which is the fairy world. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, we could go on. <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm going to go on, on, on that, because I, I usually don't bring this up because I don't think of it, but uh, my uh, 12-year-old, when she was young... Uh, she loved the Disney princess movie, Princess and the Frog. Oh, yeah. And in that movie, there is a, uh, a, 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 a voodoo wizard or voodoo uh, witch. I'm not sure what, what terms. It was a, he was a magic man. Yeah. And entities that uh, he called upon to go do his bidding were shadow people. They were straight out, straight out shadow people, and it made me really, really wonder what the hell the people at Disney were thinking <laughs> about because they were scary. A bit dark, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a bit dark for Disney. Mm. I don't know if that was though, because I think Disney had a bit of a dark side to him. I think he liked to dabble in the adult versions of his stories and. He even did something on Aliens, I remember as well, which ended up not airing as well. But it was it was done in an animated fashion. <laughs> so, so he he has in the past um, sort of tried to almost merge the two worlds of the the kind of very um, sort of innocent child world with the adult themes of um, the scary kind of um, unknown, and it. it it, yeah, it, yeah, nearly all those, dark. nearly all those stories were like that, weren't they? You had Snow White. Yeah, a bit dark. You had Cinderella with the fairy godmother. Mm-hmm. You've got the sleep. You have Sleeping Beauty. That's yeah. It. Yeah, the big, Sleeping yeah. Beauty. Mm-hmm. You had. Um, uh, there was one of the more recent ones uh, with of the past ten years, maybe Tangled. The uh, uh, a oh, yeah. witch kidnapped uh, a small girl because the small girl was magic and she was using this uh, this this girl's magic to stay alive and stay young and pretty. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, the Disney movies are loaded with that. Yeah, absolutely. Just the theme of the fantastical and the the folklore running right the way through. And, uh, you know, there's no smoke without fire. There's got to be something there originally that's kind of inspired that story. I just wonder what it was. 
Well, in the town where... He was into where, the uh, occult. That's what he was doing. He was into the occult. <laughs> well, I, I've heard quite a bit of that, uh, you know, in, in relation to Disneyland, that there are a lot of occults. There's a lot of occult symbolism in Disneyland. Yeah, I'm not an expert on that, so I can't point out any, but I've, I've, uh, I have read quite a bit about that. Um, the Disney's, Walt Disney's hometown uh, is here in Missouri, and he lived there until he was, he was still really young. He was... Uh, uh, in elementary school, like uh, for first grade or something like that, but uh, there are a lot of a lot of haunted, uh, good ghost stories uh, around his hometown mm. of Marceline. So maybe there's something to that. Yeah, that's true. I've heard that before. Have you heard hmm. about the article that hit the newspapers over here back in 2017? of the CIA agents, the remote viewers, that actually remote viewed the Mars Mars, and found that there were shadow-type people, people living or habiting Mars. They lived in a rabbit warren of pyramids and uh, very akin to shadow people, but wearing unusual clothes. And that went out in the... Daily Star, the, no, the Star newspaper, it was published in, on the 8th of February 2017. It was declassified, the transcript, yeah, the transcript reported was declassified data from the day, uh, put in the data dump, data dump, <laughs> which says one thing to me because I know what the data dump is. So declassified from the data dump. And the newspapers got a hold of it. The actual report was uh, the viewing, and the report was done on May the 22nd, 1984, at 10.09 a.m. Mm. And that's in the newspapers. Okay, and I found, sure? I found, Yeah, I found a copy of it today. I'll put yeah, a copy I, on the network page. I, I, have not, uh, I have not heard about that. No. You sure it wasn't in the Sun? No, it was in the oh. Daily Star, and then it hit another couple of papers as well because they obviously pick up from one another, you know. So it was a right. I, I like thought it's, the headline was "Alien UFO Life on Mars: CIA Psychics Declassified Files Star Stargate Project Shadow People." I am going to look that up. I, I definitely it, have to see I'll that. Give you, I'll give you the link. I'll give, you the link after, I'll give you the link after the show. Okay, all please right, do, because all I'm seeing right now is there. coming from the D Daily Express. Uh, but maybe that's the same story, then. If it was uh, it was first on the Daily Star, and I think it was picked up by the Express. All right, I will take a look at that. Mm. Um, I, I do know that the CIA, uh, during the remote viewing program, uh, who was it, Ingo Swan, I think? Yeah. Uh, was remote viewing Jupiter. Yeah. I, I do do remember reading that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't remember what he came up with, so I'm sorry I brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> apparently they did quite a off-planet remote viewing. So, and what they've seen or what they've come up with are, are printed in various places, I think. <clears throat> I wonder what... Um drove them to specifically choose Jupiter. Is it Jupiter that they chose? It's usually a target that's given to you. Oh, okay. You know, you're given a target, you're un the target's unknown to you at the time. Okay, so but they, they don't give you specifics, like I don't think, do they? I mean, no, I no, no, no. No, they wouldn't turn around and say, you've got to remote view Jupiter. Right, okay. They, they would give a target, you know, it'll either be a photograph or something or other in, a, in an envelope or... Uh, some coordinate numbers uh, that, or random numbers that represent that particular target. I see. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Yes. So, anyway, apparently, according to that uh, dis declassification uh, report from the dump, from the data dump. They actually saw people that resembled, I believe, shadow people on Mars. Um, 
Do you think? Because also the actual target was to go back 500 years AD or something or other. So that's where they were remote viewing on a timeline. Okay, carry on. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just going to say that um, a lot of the shadows that potentially we see or feel, depending on your experience, um, do you think it's got something to do with um, our visual spectrum as well? Because our visual spectrum is a little bit limited. Right, right. It 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 is. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it did it did very well. It very well could have something to do with the limits of of our eyes, and this is all that we can actually make out of out of something. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah. I'm just suggesting yeah. that because I, I, you know, and because there are some animals on Earth that have an incredible spectrum of eyesight, um, and you know, far beyond what we can see. Um, and it might be because of our limitations that we're not able to see what the shadow people really are as a possibility. And also, I think it might be a frequency as well. Uh, VH, because the Greeks talked about color and frequency being intertwined and being immersed into one. And I think if it's been projected from another dimension, they will be using frequency. Well, maybe that's why cats freak out and we can't ever tell why. Exactly. I think that's exactly why they freak out, because they right. can feel the frequency. We can't. We, uh, in the first house my wife and I lived in, um, we had a cat, uh, a yeah. dark gray cat, and his name was Smokey, and he would not uh, go into the kitchen. He, at all. He would avoid the kitchen, and, and oftentimes he would be, he would sit on the carpet Right at the edge of going into the into the kitchen where there wasn't carpet and just stare mm. at a certain point, and that kind of bothered us. And and then we started noticing that Smokey was under our feet. You know, we'd be walking, all of a sudden Smokey was under our feet, and we'd look down, and there was no cat. But we'd see in the living room, oh, Smokey's sleeping on the back of the couch. There was a time I almost tripped myself and you know, fell onto the to the living room floor because the cat was under my feet, but the cat wasn't in the room at all. Oh, so I, we were convinced Smokey was was seeing something that was beyond how we, what what we were capable of seeing. You know, kind of like what you were describing. Yeah, I think that's quite, because there's so many videos I've seen of people's animals. Looking Almost. into corners. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely going crazy. And they're, and they're just fixated by... It's almost as if it's like an insect. But then you discount an insect because the people video and say, well, we didn't see any insect there. And we checked, you know, the room out. There was nothing there. So, you know, and then, you know, the, 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 the cats are very erratic. You know, it's out of, out, of, uh, out of character for these pets to behave this way. So, in fact, there was one animal, if I remember rightly, that for a whole month would go and sit by the door and um, the owner became so concerned he started to video while he wasn't in and he started to video his dog literally walking and, and sort of yelping at the door as if somebody was coming towards the door and then there was one shot which he caught of a shadow going across the door but it was on the outside because it was a see-through window pane and there was a shadow, but you couldn't see the legs. You could only see the top half somehow. You see, you, you could see like a mist almost. And the dog just looked straight at it, yelped, and then sort of ran back into the room. And that, that was kind of almost vindication for the animal that it was definitely reacting to something. But we just couldn't, for some reason, see it until it decided to show itself. Um, Do you know do you know something? You've just reminded me of something. My husband will verify this. In the last few weeks, Gertie could be sitting there quite peaceful, and all of a sudden she'd jump up, fly around as if something's touched her. Mm. And she's looking around the room, she's absolutely going berserk, as if frightened, as if something touched her. Well, we were worried whether she might have something wrong with her brain, you know, maybe she'd mm. have a tumour or something. 
So this is something we're still thinking about. We're just monitoring her at the moment. But we also try to rule out a fly touching her or anything like that, especially when there's no, you know, you look around the room, you can't find a fly anywhere. But this has been going on for about four weeks now. And it's out of character, is it? Yeah, it's totally out of character, you know, so far out of character that we've decided that if she does it any more or much more, then she'll have to go to the vet. Mm. Well, it could be, yeah, it could be that she's experiencing something that you all can't see. Yeah, uh, it's I, better I also, in the kitchen, isn't it? <laughs> I also think that, uh, I mean... I mean, and this is this is not just me. This is this is other people who who are convinced of this that that children yeah. can yeah. can see things that that adults can't. Whether they're yeah. it's it's their eyes are are more attuned to things, or their brains aren't um, you know aren't ruined like ours are. It's less barriers, is what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what that's what a lot of children say as they're growing up. They experience things. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was one of them. Right, because we have um, my uh, my four year old has just recently started talking about her uh, imaginary friend, mm. and sometimes it's a dog and sometimes it's a person. And um, yeah, I walk a little, uh, <laughs> I tread a little softly when she yeah. starts talking about mm. that. Yeah, don't ridicule it, but keep an eye on it. Right. Keep yeah. No. I had, it's exactly what I was planning. Yeah, mm. that's the right thing to do. Because uh, I didn't have imaginary friends, but I used to see stuff when I was when I was little. Yeah, so me too. I am one. Of, I am one of those children. <laughs> you too. Yeah. Well, and I my experiences where I saw things was when I was a child. I, I wasn't small, but I was I was still a child. Puberty hadn't hit me yet when I saw things. So, I mean, maybe they're all around me right now. I just thankfully can't see them. Yeah. Uh, getting back to that, what um, Christian was saying about frequencies. Okay. Uh, these paranormal dimension beings, do you think we're maybe it is a raising it? You know, there's there meant to be a quickening going on where time is speeding up. So we're raising our vibrations. Do you think that this could be possibly why we're seeing them? Uh, well, I mean, any anything's possible, but but shadow beings have been seen for a really, really long time. Yeah, but we seem uh, to be seeing them more and more. Or maybe that's because of the internet. Well, and this this brings us if if you want to. Uh, I, I want to touch on a couple of other things because because you said mm. you wanted to talk about black eyed kids. I'm going to throw yeah, them in there, definitely. and I will also throw in uh, Slender Man. Oh, uh, mm. because these things nobody talked about these until they first came to light on, on the internet, and then a lot of people started talking about them, mm. and then a lot of people started encountering not just the black eyed kids, but you know shadow, shadow people, and they started encountering. Slender Man, which is a completely made up, it's a completely fictional yeah. entity. Fabricated but, story, isn't it? Right, right. It was for for a contest. Create the 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 creepiest you know entity for our contest. Yeah, and, and that and they did. But <laughs> when it comes about talking about these things, we are giving energy that's to right. something. So and like creating tulpas. It, that's exactly what I was gonna gonna the example I was going to use is trading tulpas, and uh, we might be doing that because there are, are people who say that they have definitely run into the entity or at least seen the entity uh, Slender Man, which doesn't exist. How yeah. did that? How did they see it? If they really <laughs> did see it, you know, it was because of all the energy that's been, you know, like, pushed like toward it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, be, I definitely believe in tulpas. So I, de- I definitely believe that, you know, air, air minds, air, air brains can do so much. And I believe that, you know, it can be, it can happen. We can create something like a tulpa. There the, is um, a story, um, oh, I can't remember the name of can't remember the name of the, the comic book artist, but he created the uh, character John Constantine. Mm. And oh, yeah, I've heard yes, 
and and there's a story about him being in either a cafe or a coffee shop, and his character walks through the door and walked up to the counter and turned around and looked at him and then walked out the other door. <laughs> and he had, had said that it was his character. It was the character that he came up with and that he drew. This was it exactly, but it was in human form. And it walked in to the shop I was in and turned around and stared at me like it knew me and then left. And he yeah. had no desire to walk out the door to follow it, which I can't blame him. <laughs> but, I mean, that's uh, a character that, that maybe at that point there was enough energy that was pushed toward it that a, that a tulpa was formed. Mm. Yeah, well, we had a case down here um, in Wales a couple of years ago where a young girl was seeing what she described as a witch around her house. She went to see psychics. And they told her that in the cellar of her house had once been a coven. Uh, so she, she related that to us and everything. I said, well, have you got a cellar? She said, no. I said, well, how come then they're seeing a coven of witches in the cellar? It, it turned out that everything that she, she kept coming out with all this stuff, and this stuff was actually happening around the house. And at the, she was very highly strung. And we believe that what she was doing, she was actually creating this uh, phenomena herself, mm. like a tulpa. Mm. And once we managed to get that over to her, then it gradually stopped. Oh, so it was a confabulation. Mm. Yeah. She was See, doing this it with is, her mind. You know? This is one of the one of the one of the many differences between the the UK and the the United States is you all have houses old enough to where someone can say, well, you had. Uh, you know, which is covered in this house? <laughs> in the yeah, but this, this, this particular yeah. house she lived in didn't have a cellar. So, yeah. well, know, in the United I've States, it might be, well, watch out. You can, I don't know if you want to buy this house. You know, they used to have Republican committee meetings here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. So getting back now to black-eyed <laughs> children. Uh, okay, so the first uh, first reported case of that was in texas in around about 1990 in uh, uh it hit the internet in, uh, in 98 or 99 a yeah. uh, journalist named brian bethel who i've spoken with and um mm. I'm friends with him on <laughs> friends with him on social media uh but it wasn't until i interviewed him about the shadow people no i mean shadow people black-eyed kids uh his story was he uh, in late late nineties, he he pulled up after work. Uh, newspaper people. He's he's a journalist, and they work late uh, yeah. late at night. And he pulled into a strip mall to pay his uh, cable television bill. And there was a night deposit box, and he was sitting in his car, had the doors locked. Um, he said it was really bright because not too far away in, in the same strip mall was a movie theater and the marquee was on, so it was really well lit, and he was writing out a check to pay his bill. Uh, and before he was able to get out of the car to go do it, he noticed that there was somebody standing at the, uh, at, at the driver's side door. And he turned and looked, and there were two young men, about 16 years old and 14. Uh, they were wearing hoodies. And one was standing a little back from the other, and uh, the one who was 16 started talking, and, and Brian had his window down just a smidge, and the, the, the kid was talking a lot more formally than a 16-year-old should be talking, and the, and, the, and, the, and the boy said, would you please take us to our, would you please take us to our house? Um, we need to get money for the, the movie we're seeing at the theater, and that really struck him as kind of odd, and he didn't normally, you know, trust a bunch, you know, couple of teenagers in the middle of the night, especially with uh, hoodies, <laughs> right? Especially in, in hoodies, and he was he felt a little bit uh, a little bit nervous, but he found his hand going to unlock the car, and he stopped himself and, and looked over at the marquee, <clears throat> and the kid he asked, "What movie are you going to see?" And the kid told him it was, uh, I don't know, some Mortal Kombat movie, and. Uh, Brian noticed that the movie had started about a half hour before. So the kids, you know, he was suspicious. You know, you're not going to that movie. I'm not letting you in my car. 
and the 16-year-old looking boy was getting really impatient and demanding that they be let into the car. Hmm. And then Brian noticed that this kid's eyes were you know, black as a shark's. No white at all, no iris. It was just completely black. And that absolutely terrified him. He slammed the car into reverse and shot out of there. And as he turned around, there was no place for these two kids to have gone. But he looked, and there was nobody in the parking lot. Um, when when I interviewed him, it had been, uh, I don't know, more than 10 years since that had happened, and he still lives in the same town. And he said when he has to drive past that uh, uh, strip mall, he he gets he's just scared. He's really scared. He's going to run into those kids again. Mm. Yeah, there was I I read today a story um, of a soldier who was on on the ba- on the base and one way or another. His uh, roommate had gone off somewhere. No one else was around, and there was a knock. He was sitting reading, and there was a knock on the door. And two children, two small children, were standing there, and uh, they had black eyes, obviously. And they said that they wanted, to, or their heads were slightly down. And they wanted to come in and read with him. So how they knew he was reading, I don't know. But they wanted to come in and read with him. And he was felt this overpowering sense of, you know, fear. And um, he he was about to let them in. And then just some, his gut instinct told him no. And he slammed the door on them. When he asked about on the army camp the following day if anyone had seen them, no one had seen them. Mm. Right, and that's generally the case. They generally tend to just disappear, but they they will approach someone, whether they're in a car or in a house. Mm. Or in in one case, um, uh, a, a man I interviewed was walking. He'd been over to a friend's house, and they were watching movies. And instead of staying at his friend's house, he decided it's just a couple of miles to home, so I'm just I'm going to walk home. And it was in a in a smallish city, and he was walking. Um, in this on this lonely stretch of road, and a couple of children around ten and twelve stopped him, asking, "Do you know where X, you know, whatever this name of the cemetery was?" Yeah. And the guy was first a little bit freaked out because it was like one o'clock in the morning, and here was a ten-year-old and a twelve-year-old asking directions to a cemetery. Mm. And. But just like Brian Bethel, he felt like he just had an urge that he wanted to do what these kids wanted him to do. Mm. And he he mentioned where it was, and 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 the and the children said, "Well, can you take us there, please?" And again, their their manner of speech was a, an adult's manner of speech. It wasn't yeah. you know small children. Mm. And he started to get a really bad feeling, you know, with all these together. And then he noticed their eyes. That they were pure black, and he just started sprinting. <laughs> she just started sprinting towards home. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's that's a that's that's a common common mm-hmm. type case. Get somebody alone. Yeah, the, be- the person's always alone, aren't they? Right. No one else is around, and they always seem to be in twos. Generally, there was one uh, one case where there was one one child, yeah. and this uh, woman had a knock on her door, and she opened the door, and there was a girl of about seven, six or seven, uh, dressed in a it was it was like a yellow sundress with flowers that mm-hmm. was about twenty years out of date, and she said the girl was dirty and her breath smelt awful and her hair was greasy, and the girl was was saying. Uh, there's a bad man after me. Please let me in. And of course this woman wanted to let her in the house because, you know, if there's a bad man after her, you Mm -hmm. know, she wants to take care of this child, which is why I think these entities appear as children because initially people want to help them. Yeah. And and then she noticed the child's eyes and, and she scared the hell out of her. And she slammed the door in the, in the child's face and, uh, when she you know, went to the window and looked out on the porch, there was nobody there. Yeah. And again, it's gaining entry, whether it's into a car, whether it's into a house. What do you think would happen if somebody actually did let them in? Are well, they like vampires? I they have haven't. To, they have to be invited in? 
I really haven't talked with people who have in, let people let, let black eyed kids in, but I did have somebody offer this up to me that uh, made me sit back and, and think, whoa, was maybe the people, the healthy people who died in their homes of no discernible reason, and, and there, it was called natural causes, maybe it was these people who let the black eyed kids in. Mm. Oh. Possible. Oh, weird. Yeah. Nearly choked on my cherry then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you, I mean, a thirty-four, a thirty-four-year-old man in great health. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, he's you know, John doesn't okay. hasn't open. I answered his phone for three days, and they find him dead of a heart attack on his couch. Yeah. Really, that didn't happen. <laughs> there's um, yeah. there's a case, um, a British case um, in Cannock Chase. Oh not yeah. Too far away from here. Nothing well. strange happens in Cannock Chase. Chase. <laughs> <laughs> but, Every, everything's meant to happen in Cannock Chase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just heard about it. I don't know if it's true or not, but there was a a, a guy who was out doing a late night walk because a lot of people like to walk around the forest around there, and um, usually dog walking things like that. But I think he was on his own, and he strayed off the path. I think he got a little bit lost, and he got turned around a little bit, and he got a bit confused. And as he was trying to get his bearings, he saw what can only be described as a child, like a, a a small black-haired child with a white dress. She stuck out like a sore thumb. And he instantly, his first, na- you know, being a father himself was to help the child. So he started to make his way towards the child. And then as he got closer, he started to realize that the child's face was looking downwards. And he thought, this is getting really odd now because <laughs> uh, this child's just not moving and as he then approached the child was about to say can I help you are you are you lost or something like that the head of the child lifted up and then the, these piercing black eyes just came straight back at him and he just quickly turned round and just legged it the other way because he didn't he'd never seen anything like it it was really the eyes just completely spooked him completely. He's like, he didn't, he knew it wasn't real. That's the one thing he got, he got from, from the experience. He, he said that there was no way that that was a living human being. That was like a, that was like a fake human being. His, his, his words were, which I think if you look at the running theme between all the other experiences, people, start to sort of buy it at the beginning and then gradually they start to twig there's something not right here whether it's a a gut feeling or then you get the hit you get the black eyes because they for some reason they can't change their eyes to make it look like ours or whatever it is that's trying to be like us just cannot change the eyes and it's probably a good thing they can because there'll be a lot more people in big trouble i think because i don't think their intentions are good there have been a few cases and of of black eyed people that that have changed their eyes and, and oh, I, right. I want to go over I want to go over a couple of those. Um, uh, I had read in a newspaper, um, I think it was the Scotsman, uh, about uh, there, a fellow that was uh, they were looking the, the police were looking for a, a guy who was who was wanted for a couple of deaths, a couple of murders. And this bicyclist gave a report to the newspaper. He was bicycling through a park, and a car came by, and he looked at the driver, and he said, that was the man. That was the picture that had been in the news. And then the man must have realized that this guy was staring at him, and he turned and looked, and and this this suspected killer had jet black eyes. Mm. And, of course, the guy on the cycle fell, fell over. Uh, which probably would have happened to me, but the, but the man kept kept driving. I mean, he was eventually caught, but this one person saw his eyes to be jet black, and and they hadn't been, you know, the police had never reported something like that. The the other case to me is a bit more disturbing. I talked talked with a guy whose uh, nephew was two years old, and he was one of those children that was always getting into trouble. Um. And being mean to other 
children, uh, other other smaller children, you know, slapping, hitting, pushing. Um, he had pushed uh, one of his cousins down the stairs. And at one family dinner, this two-year-old was able to push a bookshelf and he was pushing the bookshelf to fall over on a baby that was laying on a on a blanket on the floor, and and the the man I was talking to caught it before it fell, and the mother came over and grabbed the two year old, and was holding holding the the two year old patting his back and and this man said that little my nephew looked at me over my sister's shoulder, and grinned and his eyes changed from blue to entirely jet black. <laughs> Do you know, son, many, many years ago, I was holding the child of a friend. I picked her up. She was about oh, three years old, or just under three years old, I should say, about in between two and three. And I picked her up, and I was talking to her mother and one thing, just holding her in my arms. And uh, at one point, I, talk, I looked at her and smiled, and she looked back at me, and I swear her eyes turned bloody black. Mm. I swear they did, but I wouldn't say I didn't say anything to the mother or anyone. I just put the kid down. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, having being being a father, I, I completely understand that children are uh, pretty wicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to shadow people, do you think? Because one of the theories is that shadow people actually possess the oh, they take over the body of children. And possess them, and that's where you get your black eye kids. Have you heard I, that I, one? You know, I have heard that one, and and again, it's going way too too far a stream here for me to say mm. yes. That's definitely it, um, because I, I interviewed a woman from Toronto who is she is firmly convinced that black eyed kids are um, uh, extraterrestrial hybrids. Yeah. So I mean, what what you know? How, how far do we we want to go? I yeah. I, I tend to um, look at things as much as possible, as, as simply as possible. Uh, for example, I'm still under the uh, under the thought that Bigfoot's a blush, flesh, flesh and blood creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I still think that um, you know extra tra- or that craft we see in the sky, UFOs or uh, what are they called now? Uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. I'm still in my head that I, I think that these are nuts and bolts craft, and I know both of those thoughts are not what most people, you know, claim nowadays. But until those two are disproven, I'm still going with the simplest explanation. But you you I, see pictures of greys, don't you, with black eyes? Right. So. Could it be? Yeah, could it be? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I mean yeah, their their eyes, big, yeah. big black eyes. I mean, that's yeah. that's a possibility. Mm. Mm. Something to think about. Definitely. Another uh, black eyed kid explanation I got, and I I didn't spend a lot of time with this person because, frankly, he scared me. <laughs> <laughs> he scared you. He scared me. Uh, I don't ah. get scared easily, frankly. I, I do hope it was his, with his telling of the story. But I'm uh, I'm just happy that that uh, we were communicating uh, online as opposed to face to face. I'm not sure. He what gave I you that done. spooky feeling, yeah. Yes, that the um, his explanation of black eyed kids. He said, "I I am one of these entities, <gasps> and we're completely misunderstood by by you people." Uh, but he said the origins of the black-eyed race is goes all the way back to Genesis in the Bible, and our race is descended from Adam and Eve, created by God, and his race is descended from the serpent. That's mm. the devil, Satan. The fallen yeah. angels, in other words. Yes, and he said they're they're. Uh, Hanging around his his race is hanging around undercover, uh, living amongst us, and just waiting for uh, the dragon to rise. Oh, great! <laughs> oh. So you see why I kind of backed off of that conversation. Well, that is a bit scary. I've got to admit that, that a is a bit warped. scary. And if you think for one minute he's telling you that he's actually one of them, 
That's, He's telling you he's one of them, that's Jason. That's what he was telling me. I know, I know. Even I would shite myself over that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't scare that. easy. I've got to admit. Gosh. He, he must have realised the effect that would have had on you because it, to, to actually admit that he is not human and... Um, and a fallen angel in Genesis. It's quite a lot for a human being to comprehend. And also, I know it, it, it is. <laughs> and I, I didn't want this information to, to go. I mean, I just, I just didn't want to keep it and not, you know, let it, let it spread somewhere. So, um, I, I forwarded it to Nick, Nick Redfern. Yeah. And I want to see if he's, he hasn't done anything with it yet, but, uh, <laughs> maybe he will. Well, knowing Nick, yeah, he Nick's will. A busy he guy. will. Oh, he is very, very busy guy, but he's a lovely guy, absolutely sweetie. Do you know? So, I, I, there's a film I've just remembered. Actually, uh, there's a fantasy film called Crow. Oh yeah. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard. No, of it. I've heard I think, of it. I, I think it's been on the telly. Okay, you? if yeah. you ever get a chance to watch it, I think you should, because this film. Uh, encompasses a few ideas of what the spirit world could be conjuring up. In other words, it could be controlled by literally like a, a, a bestial entity that is controlling and able to metamorphosis into different things. And um, this is trying to come into our in our reality, but is struggling to do it. But um, and there's a scene, I believe, where there's like a, a blind seer who is trying to help these adventurers save this person. And the beast manages to kill the seer, but then copy him. But he, funny enough, has jet Imitating, black you mean. eyes. Absolutely. He doppelgangers yeah. him. He has jet black eyes. I've just remembered. He had completely jet black eyes. Which matched the beast, right? Which um, there are uh, vampire movies with those black eyes yeah, as as well, and that that's something that I I dug into um, was what sort of you know terrestrial explanation could we have of of black black eyes? Um, there are uh, genetic defects to where the pupils are large and the ir irises are really small, but they don't cover the whites. There are uh, drugs that people can take, uh, legal or illicit, that cause the pupils to just really expand. Mm. Of course, they don't expand to cover the entire, no. um, you know, the the entire white. Um, and I, I interviewed a guy who bought a pair of contacts, just like they use in the movies for Halloween so he would have completely black eyes and his explanation of them made me realize that across the board these kids can't be wearing contact lenses yeah. because for one they have to have prescriptions so they will fit their eyes eyeballs exactly yeah. they uh, cost uh, around $300 an eye Three hundred dollars a contact, and they pop out about every fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I don't think you'll get them on the national health people. Right, probably <laughs> not. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so it's not like these things are. I mean, anybody with a with a completely black eye is it? It is possible for someone to have one with these contact lenses, but it's not practical. Mm. I mean, who's going to spend three or six hundred dollars on a uh, on a practical joke that's you know going to be really uncomfortable to to wear? And, and also, all the people that experience meeting these whatever they are instinctively look at the eyes and go, "Well, you're not somehow real to me. You're not somehow human. I don't know what it is about you, but you're not human. You look human in every other way, but those eyes are just telling me that you're not human." And I'm getting the hell out of here. And well, and it's not just the eyes. Uh, most of the people I've talked with, it's they have a feeling, just right. a feeling about them uh, that something is off with these before they even see the eyes. Right, okay. 
So yeah, it's 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 both, and it's it's uh, yeah. There's something wrong here. I'm scared, but why should I be scared of this ten year old kid? Oh crap! Yeah, that's why. He's <laughs> <laughs> that sitting human. Yeah. Oh dear. So this is one of those cases. My my wife is a great editor, and she mm. has. Um, edited a lot of my a lot of my work and and she told me a long time ago because I, I wanted to do a book on black eyed kids and I didn't. I've written quite a bit on them, but she said, Jason, here's here's the here's the deal. Um none of the other things you write about, you know, shadow people, ghosts, Bigfoot, UFOs, none of that stuff bothers me. These shadow shadow or these uh, black eyed kids scare the hell out of me. So please don't do a book on these because if one of them comes to our door, it's your ass. <laughs> so I'm not going to think it like is that. scary, yeah. isn't it? It is yeah. scary. She's right. You know, there's something about children, even child ghosts. There's something about children that kind of gives you that unnervy feeling. A guy I know played me a uh, an EVP he took at an old uh, rural cemetery, and there was a, a patch of tombstones. For children yeah. who died of a cholera outbreak, outbreak at the turn of the last century, mm-hmm. and he'd set a recorder on top of the tombstone and, and you know went off to do something else. And when he came back to get it and listened to it, there were children singing "Ring Around the Rosie." Yeah, Ooh. that was creepy. Yeah. yeah. Well, "Ring Around the Rosie" was a nursery rhyme about the plague. Yes. You know. Yeah, uh, which one of which anything. one of the sim yeah, which one of the symptoms is like cold like symptoms, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Yeah. So oh my God, yeah. yeah. That's uh pretty scary. Pretty scary. But you know I d I don't know what it is. I think I, I don't wanna say it because it happens here otherwise, you know, no my luck. I've just had to get up to t- shut the kitchen door. It was open two inches and I felt like someone was watching me through it. Oh god. So while you were talking I sneaked off and shut that. But there's I don't know, there is something more I don't know. Even when you see them in films, black-eyed children or child ghosts, it's the way they move. You know, you get this, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, we are more sympathetic to ghosts of children and everything, but the majority of stuff that most people think are ghosts are usually something else and shape-shift into something far worse. Right, and there are when well when it comes to uh, a, a lot of entities, uh, you know, be it mm. ghosts or or shadow people or or black eyed kids or 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 something else, um, you know, we we talked about tulpas and yeah. the energy that we put towards a certain idea. Um, there are you know entities I believe out there that are ancient mm-hmm. and pay attention. And when energy is directed to a specific thing, they might take that form. Hmm. You know, and you know what, 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 whatever you know, people want to want to call it an elemental, or uh, you know, one of one of the uh, old gods, or whatever people want to call it. I, I, I think that there's something out there that will use our energy to become what we want. Not for the good. Yeah. Again, to like the shadow people I talked about, creating a fear in people. I, I, I really think that, that nightmares do do sometimes come to life. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that has just knocked me for six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't really get nightmares. I just get kind of uh, information. But, you know, I have had there a couple of nightmares. I remember one I had oh, many, many years, moons ago. It must have been 30, 40 years ago. And this isn't to do with shadow people, but it's always stuck with me. I was in an underground cavern somewhere, and there were like trolls type. That's the only way I can explain them. These things were like trolls. They had no necks. They had long arms, and they were eating parts of human beings. Sound like Morlocks. 
Oh, don't tell me it was true. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. I'll tell you what, that has scared me for years, thinking that these things may have been around. Maybe I did see this in a dream or astral traveling or whatever. I know well, it was a nightmare. I know I was in bed. Morlocks are the once human creatures of the future that H.G. Uh, H. Wells wrote about in The Time Machine. They were oh. bestial creatures with no necks and, and long arms that uh, that ate humans uh, that lived on the surface. Yeah, and they lived they, in caverns. But this is what I saw, and I've said it. I've said it before on the radio show a couple of years ago when we were t- I was talking with Mark about something. Yes, and uh, it's always stuck with me. It's always been a fear of mine since then. It's one nightmare that I don't want to go through again. Well, and you know, I've often I've wondered this, you know, uh, like Steven Spielberg, uh, like like H.G. Wells or H.P. Lovecraft, uh, you know, um, uh, Stephen King, hmm. you know, what you know, George Lucas. What what if these creative people that bring these, you know, characters in these you know worlds or universes that seem real to us, what if they're actually in their dreams or in during their creative process are seeing into a different reality where these things are real. What if they're just unwittingly writing down what they're actually seeing? That could well happen. I I, I do believe that could well happen. I really do. Mm. But, you know, this is, like I said, this is one thing I never, ever want to see again. And I didn't even think there was a name for them. The only thing I, I've ever called them was troll-like things, troll-like beings. Yeah. And troll, they were underground. Oh, well, if they, well. it, yeah, but if so, we don't know there's so many things out there, so many things that we can't explain. What if there is something like this? Why are all these missing people going? You know, people just go missing. Right, I, I am. Uh, I I follow uh, the missing person stories a, a lot, uh, mm. for because one. yes, the the David Polites has has yeah, done well. so much work on this, and nice. and it's fascinating because you know there are so many of them, and and they fit such a narrow criteria. Yeah, they do. And you know when when they you know reappear, if it's if it's a, if it's a body, if it's a dead body. Um, They'll be laying in a spot that has been searched fifty times. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe they're half naked and their clothes are found folded, sitting on a tree trunk. Yeah. You know how does that happen? But these are actual, you know, police cases or or you know official cases, and how and why? Uh, mm-hmm. He also did some work on. Um, there were a lot of. Um, um, uh, deaths in Manchester of, of young uh, young men, college college age uh, right, yeah. men who had fallen okay. into, into the who, yeah I should say shouldn't say fallen into the canals but yeah were were found in in canals and uh, I believe one of them had uh, they had gone into uh, in, into a, uh, a tavern that that had a second floor and there was surveillance video of, of this person and his friends going in. And then his friends coming out, but this mm. man never coming out, and he had just vanished, and there was yeah. no other way out. Yeah. I well, down it. here in Wales, about ten years ago, there was no end of suicides at Bridge End. There was a place called Bridge End between Cardiff and where I live. I know where it is. Yeah. But they were these young people were just killing themselves. They were committing suicide right, left, and centre. And nobody could work out why. I've been to. Britain. They were hanging them. Yeah, they were hanging it's themselves nice from place. trees. Well, I've only passed through it on the M4, but the point is, you know, that you look it up, uh, Christian, you'll see it. I will well, the, do. There yeah, were I so look many, that. absolutely so many deaths down there where people were just killing themselves for no reason. No, there wasn't depression. There was no. It wasn't to do with drugs. No one could work out why they were doing it, and it was all young people. Wasn't there some well, sort of online pact or something going on? I heard. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Because oh. a lot of these, a lot of these students and things, they didn't even know each other. Oh right. Okay. 
All right, and there's a um, – well, there's Suicide Forest in Japan – yeah. That people have gone to for years and killed themselves, but it might just be that it's got that reputation. Mm. But this, this is the, uh, you know, with with the people committing suicide in a specific spot. There's a bridge in in Scotland where, oh, yeah, where they jump. Fifties, the dogs have jumped yeah. off the bridge and c- committed suicide. Yeah, for no reason. Yeah, they just right. don't jump, don't they? And they're dogs. <laughs> why, yeah. why are they committing suicide? I that's crazy. It, it's as if there's some force, some sort of force or something that's taking over, just takes mm. over at that particular time and, and kind of encourages it, these people. Well, I think that there are places on Earth that have certain powers certain yeah, uh, I agree. influences there's there's one close to where well around the area where i live there've been given that it's a rural area and there 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 are a number of strange occurrences um i think that maybe i'm living in one of those areas because there's so many strange things have happened around here that shouldn't given the the population of of this area hmm one of them is is a is a, a boy disappearing. Since we're on disappearances, he was 18, 18 years old. He was still living at home with his with his mom, and told his mom one day, I, "I'm going to go out to the garage and grab the jumper cables. I'll, I'll be back in a second. And he just disappeared, middle yeah. of the day. That's nobody's it. ever heard a peep from him. They have nobody's ever said, you know, there, there's nothing. He's just gone. Mm. There's so many, so many cases like that. You know, people just going down to the corner shop to buy a newspaper, don't there's come a, back. There's a British guy that was, I think he was in, like, one of the middle European countries skiing. I'm not sure which country it was now, but, um, and he was with his girlfriend and his family. He just, he, he was, his life was fine. He was having a great career. He was about to graduate from college and then go and do his job and everything so everything was really rosy they were out celebrating wherever they were skiing and he said good night to his girlfriend at one hotel and all he had to do was walk from the hotel where he was about 150 yards to his hotel okay it was snowing a lot but there were cameras in the hotel he was leaving and one that he was going to he knew where the hotel was he had been drinking, but he had not got confused because they saw him leave the doorway and he said goodbye, smiling, happy. And then he walked, he, all he had to do was walk down the street and then just turn slightly to the left. This guy completely disappeared. Hmm. And yeah, then wasn't, wasn't they found this, him three days later on a cliff face about 15 miles away. On a ledge, he could never have got. And wasn't this? Because I think I remember, uh, I remember reading about this case. Wasn't the the the, the skiing resort town they were in uh, inaccessible? Yeah, by you car? couldn't get in or out because the, the snow was so bad that to get in or out, you'd have needed like full, you know, like uh, winter gear. You'd have had, you'd have skis. You would you, he wouldn't have been able to walk too far, but and no one he no one would have dared doing it. He would have not dared doing it because he th- there was no light beyond the village. It was just pitch darkness, and to get to that ma- <laughs> to get to that mountain was just not impossible. We're talking in the middle of the night. He's been drinking. He's not going to leave that village by choice. He's an intelligent young man. He might be a bit drunk, but he is not going to do something daft like that. He is not going to jeopardize his safety. It was a bit. It was a bit cold. It was like minus three or four or something. So he wouldn't have been used to that. So he would have wanted to get into the warmth after just being in a nice warm hotel. There's no way this guy, who's six foot four, he's built like the side of a, a, a you know a toilet house. You know he's very strong. He's very intelligent. He just suddenly goes, I know what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to walk 15 miles in the wrong direction. Nowhere near any any safety. Nowhere near any any road. I'm going to traverse a sheer surface mountain, and then I'm going to lie down and die. <laughs> that is just absolutely, for me, the most unbelievable story I've ever heard. And the the family still to this day do not know what's happened to him or how he ended up there. Because for him to get there, he would have had to literally climb it. 
himself, but there's no proof he ever did that. But he is he definitely ended up there and died of hypothermia. And so so it's either like alien abduction or some influence. Some sort of influence. Right, and I had and this is not something that David David Pleides has done, but I, I've heard um it, I don't remember what show it was, but they were interviewing people who had had that sort of experience almost happen. And a yeah. few people called in saying that, yes, I was either I was bike riding and we were in the in the woods in the wilderness, or I was hiking with friends and I got I was either way ahead or way behind them, and all of a sudden I got really hot. I mean, hotter than I should have, and I started taking my clothes off because it was so hot and. Then I, I felt the urge to just walk off into the woods until somebody came back and, and found me. And, and then I was, you know, cold again all of a sudden. It was like some fog had lifted from me. So it does seem, you know, if, the, if these people are telling the truth, it does seem that, that there's some sort of, you know, outside influence that, that's making them behave like that. Mm. And there's been children that have given accounts to rescuers of being carried by something very large and hairy. And I don't think it's a man that has, you know, doesn't bother going to the barbers too often. Um, there was a case in, in yeah. I, I completely agree with that. And there was a case in North Carolina last winter uh, to where a young, really young boy, I think he was maybe four, uh, might have been five, had gone missing. And he was gone for two or three days and it had dropped the temperature dropped uh, below 25 degrees fahrenheit so this boy would have would have died out in the cold mm. and then people who were out searching for him you know that second or third day found him in an area that they've searched before and he said that a bear had found him and fed him and kept him warm for those you know the time he was gone mm. yeah no a bear would not do that no. a bear would eat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. But, you know, anything hairy in the eyes of a little boy may, you know. He's trying to rationalize it, isn't he? He's yeah. Trying to, he's trying right. to understand what he's looking at. So that's the best way he can rationalize what he's looking at. So he will call it a bear because that's the only thing he, he knows as being hairy and that large. So mm. he wouldn't instantly think, you know, some sort of throwback to a primeval human being or. Even the word Bigfoot would even cross a young child's eye, uh, mind. Um, and, and there's been many cases like that. Um, children disappearing and then reappearing. And the, how they've got to where they've, they've ended up. And some of them have survived and some of them not. Um, and some of them aren't wearing shoes. Yeah, that's, that's another thing, thing, yeah. That's right, you're not going to... March 12 miles. You're not going to be a two-year-old child and child and march 12 miles over a mountain range without any shoes. No, no, it's not going to happen. They're not going to take those shoes off. No way. So what is going on? <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> That's one of the things that Politis has, has refused to do that I completely respect yeah, him for. Is he's refused to speculate what it is. Well, he doesn't want to upset the families as well. And like you know, he's got to keep integrity because he's an ex-law enforcement, and he we, wants we, to. We all, yeah, and we also have another writer over here, Steph Young. She's quite good with this. She writes these sort of stories in oh, her well, books. I didn't know that. Yeah, Steph Young. Mm. Well, We've had her on the show. Oh, yeah, right. she's very good on these sort of things. A lot yeah. of her books are about missing people, missing in the woods, and things like that. I, I have experience going into a wood um, where I, was, I wasn't familiar with the woods. And I went in and all the animals were making noises when I went in. And then when I went into a clearing in the middle of nowhere, everything just seemed to stop. And all the animals and the birds went deadly silent. And yet it was in the middle of the day. And I, I looked around me, and I was just completely in awe. And I was like, I can't hear, I can't even hear a pin drop. And it's the strangest thing I've ever experienced. And I, I actually stood there because you know, I used to do a lot of walking in the old days, and in places I used to quite actively enjoy getting lost, just to try and test myself, my ability to try and find my way out of it. So, and I think that's possibility why some people 
um, do end up missing because they end up trying to test themselves that way. But I, if you're um, obviously a lot of the wildlife in the UK is generally not going to eat you, so you, we're <laughs> a bit safe. Here. You haven't seen air flying hedgehogs, have you? <laughs> I know, there have been some credible, uh, credible alien big cat reports from, uh, <laughs> from England. Yeah, yeah there has, yeah. But it, our biggest cryptid is the flying hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I have been in, in, uh, in, in, in the woods when, when that has happened as well. And I don't know what was there with me. Was, was there a bobcat? Was there a cougar? Was there coyotes? What was there? Or was it something that I couldn't see? Yes. That was something stalking. was watching you, Jason. Something was there that I mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, that I couldn't see. So I, I whenever, whenever that hap- has happened, I've left. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, really, just go. I just leave. Yeah, because right. there's a reason why they're quiet. They're waiting for something to happen. That's what's yeah, happening. Wa- waiting to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So whether it's aliens, ghosts, interdimensional beings, time travelers, or whatever, one thing is definite. They all attract this sort of fear, don't they? That you get with the reports of the black-eyed children. Right. Uh, yeah. It's the same with uh, well, the, the some of the types of shadow people that I that I talked about. It's the same thing. This not just a fear, but yeah, sort of an extra extra layer of fear. Something yeah. that seems to be generated by the entity. So could it be that there is something living amongst us, like the Fae from that? You know. Something that we can't see. Something that has been here a long time, been part of humanity for a long time, but we can't see it. Well, we Could can't the, see it, or we can see it. We can't. We, I interviewed a guy who uh, claims that he uh, had a girlfriend who claimed to be part fae, and she could do some things that people shouldn't be able to do, and... Um, she delivered newspapers, oh. so she had a regular job. Mm. I used to have to deliver newspapers. I couldn't do it. Mm. I used to make my brother do it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, we're getting, we're getting on to the end of the show yeah. now, Jason. Yeah, so yeah. let's have your books again. Where you can be bought, where they can be bought, obviously on Amazon, people. Right on Amazon. Uh, uh, yeah, I've uh, all my books. Uh, my uh, five books on the paranormal, which I've got a book on cryptids uh, that I've mentioned. Uh, Darkness Walks, which is on shadow people, and uh, a few books on uh, a couple of books on ghosts. And one of the books, uh, What Lurks Beyond, I, I really l- enjoyed the uh, the concept. Um, I looked for all of the paranormal things I could find within 100 miles of my house. Mm. Yeah. And uh, basically at the end of the book, I challenge people to go find all of the paranormal things they can find within 100 miles of their house because I can guarantee you if I found all the things I could find near mine, you guys can find it near yours. Oh, there'd be so many here, though, Jason. you would never be able to list them all. 100 miles. It would be better saying five miles from the house. <laughs> <laughs> However you feel on cutting the mileage <laughs> off. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, I'm going to do this book, but it's, it's going to be on my living room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it on one house, this one. <laughs> but So you've got a website? Oh, yes, it's Jason mm-hmm. Offit, J-A-S-O-N-O-F-F-U-T-T. Dot com. I've got links to all my books. I've got some stuff about me. I've got a blog I sometimes put things on. Uh, my Twitter feed's on there, and uh, uh, a begging for money button is on there as well. Okay, <laughs> and you can also find Jason on Facebook, Jason Office. Right, Jason Offit. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. You are a very popular person. Very popular person. And don't forget, people, his books are all under the name of Jason Offit on Amazon, Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk and all the other Amazons as well, I believe. Yes, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, thanks for coming on the show. And we're going to have to have you on again because I'm sure there's more that you can tell us. Oh, yeah. Thanks, I, Jason. Well, thank you very much. I'd love to be back on. Just let me know. 
Okay, then we'll chat about that later on. I'll uh, contact you. And I'll also let you have that link to that newspaper. Oh, no, you found it, didn't you? Yes. Mm, okay. All right, then. Well, for people that are interested, I will put the link on the Paranormal UK Radio Network page. So, people, thank you very much for listening in. You've been listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Show on the, the flagship show to the Paranormal UK Radio Network. Hope Gertie wasn't too noisy, and I thank Jason Offert for coming on and being our guest tonight, and thank you also, Christian, yeah, for thank you too, thank you, Mary. Propping me thank up, you. supporting me as usual. <laughs> it's been great. Okay. Thank you, Jason. All right. Bye, everyone.